Let's introduce the concepts of reliability and validity and how they apply to data collection and marketing research. Reliability is when a respondent responds in the same or similar manner to an identical or nearly identical measure. In other words, it's consistent. Validity, on the other hand, is the ac accuracy of a response to a measure. But another way, when we say we're measuring something, we really are indeed measuring that thing. Oftentimes, when it comes time to illustrate reliability and validity, it's done by way of a target. Look at these three targets below. Let's imagine that our objective is to hit the bullseye. Which one of these represents valid, but not reliable? That would be the one in the middle. Notice how the shots are all scattered, often missing the mark. It's not reliable, but if we imagine that we averaged all of these into one spot, it would be in the center. So even though it's inconsistent, we are attempting to do that thing of hitting the bullseye. Next question, which one of these targets is reliable, but not valid? That's the bullseye in the far left. It's very consistent. Look how close all those holes are gathered together. Unfortunately, they're not hitting the target. Finally, let's take a look at the last target on the far right hand side. That appears to be both reliable and valid. It's hitting the mark, and that mark is what we intend to hit. Let's see if we can understand the issue of reliability and validity in measurement by way of a more marketing example. Let's imagine that we want to measure customer satisfaction with a recent flight for a consumer of an airline. To do this, we use the following survey question. How likely are you to fly with Oceanic Airlines again in the next six months? Very unlikely to very likely. This is a pretty straightforward question it would likely generate generally reliable answers. However, this is an invalid measure. Why is that? Well, that's because we missed the target entirely when we were setting up our question. This question isn't measuring satisfaction at all. It's measuring repatronage intentions. Sure, customer satisfaction influences repatronage intentions, but it's not the same concept. In many cases, the reason people fly on a particular airline has nothing to do with their satisfaction, but because it's the only route available, or the only time that's convenient, or the price is right. Now let's take a look at two more examples where we're trying to measure customer satisfaction with a flight. Both of these questions look identical. Select the choice that most closely characterizes your most recent Oceanic Airlines flight. And there's four options from most negative to most positive. The one on the left says very bad, mediocre, quite good, and awesome. And the one on the right says terrible, average, quite good, and excellent. Now admittedly, there's other issues with these survey questions that I haven't talked about yet in our lecture slides and lecture videos. But bear with me and consider why these differences in the labeling that we used might generate a valid but unreliable measurement on one hand and a valid and reliable measurement on the other hand. The reason for this difference can be understood because of an interesting study conducted by YouGov. YouGov did a study where they presented respondents with a list of descriptive words. Very bad, somewhat bad, all right, quite good, awesome, incredible, and the like. They had people rate on a zero to 10 point scale whether they considered the word itself to be very negative or very positive. They learned some interesting things. Like for example, on average, the phrase very bad actually scores worse than the phrase awful or abysmal. That's rather amazing to me, but I'm not so interested in these averages right now, but rather I want you to focus in on the spread of the data and responses for each individual word. Look at the word very bad. Notice that even though it's the lowest score on average, there's quite a bit of dispersion in how people interpret it, that's that word. Look at the word mediocre. Same thing for mediocre. There's an enormous amount of spread for how people interpret mediocre to either be very negative or very positive. Same is also true for quite good and awesome. On the other hand, the word terrible, average, quite good, and excellent are much more consistent amongst individuals in terms of how they evaluate them. Because individuals' understanding of the words are more consistent, we would expect that a measurement using the words terrible, average, quite good, and excellent would gen generally be more reliable. Whereas words like very bad, mediocre, quite good, and awesome, due to more discrepancy in how people interpret those words, might still render ultimately a valid measurement, but it would do so in a rather unreliable way.